Peter Tilly and the Red 8 Line. Thanks, Dave. Happy to be here at home with you and everyone watching from home today. Uh, as Dave just mentioned, we will have time for Q&A at the end, so please do feel free to type up any questions that you come up with along the way in the YouTube comment box, and we'll get to as many of them as we can. So the Red 8 line is the newest addition to the Red range of products. It replaces the original Red 4 Pre, and it's uh, joining the Red 8 Pre and the Red 16 line as the Red range continues to expand into the perfect resource for any home or professional studio. The Red 8 line is an exemplary asset for the synth collector. If you're like me, you likely have or had all of your synths and keyboards going into one analog mixer and then the stereo output of that going into your interface. Well, now with the Red 8 line, I can have all of my synth inputs going into the line inputs on the Red 8 line, um, and that allows me to use them simultaneously in individual tracks in Logic or Pro Tools, Ableton, whatever it is that you use. And with the digital expansion, I still have 50 available inputs that I can use to be creative. And when it's safe to do so, of course, have other creative people in my home studio as well. For the analog gear collector, this is gonna function the exact same way. Simply replace that synth connection with all of your rack mount sources. Um, so perhaps you have some Neve channel strips or some vintage compressors that provide you with your own unique sound. You can bring that gear into the future without going 88 miles an hour simply by using the Red 8 line as the host for your home or pro studio. So on top of the individual channel assignments that the Reds offer, which is eight mic pre's on the Red 8 Pre, eight line inputs on the Red 8 line, and 16 line inputs on the Red 16 line, each of these devices offer a full breadth of digital connectivity, which really makes them what they are. So let's take a deeper look. So as I go from left to right along the back panel, I'm gonna explore everything the Red 8 line has to offer. First and foremost, for those of you familiar with Focusrite Pro, you probably already know of our close relationship with Audinate and our love and devotion to Dante. So for those unfamiliar with Dante, check out the link below to our Introduction to Dante class, which will take you through the journey of what, where, when, and why, everything Dante. For those that already understand Dante, our dual Ethernet ports allow for both switched mode and redundant mode, meaning you can either use the Red 8 line to daisy chain another Dante device to your network, or you can set up two completely different networks side by side as a fail safe during a mission critical event, something like the Grammys or the Super Bowl halftime show where it's live and you really can't have anything happen. To the right of the Dante ports, we're gonna have four BNC connectors here. The left two are for traditional word clock. Uh, anyone that likes to run a master clocking scheme through their studio will be familiar with that. And the two on the right are specifically for Pro Tools Loop Sync, which essentially does the same thing, but just slightly differently. You may notice as we're traveling from left to right along the back of the board here, we're also traveling through time. So as the last series of digital connections, um, we have an optical ADAT and an RCA SPDIF. These dual optical connections provide 16 channels of ADAT up to 48K and 192 channels, uh, you get eight channels between both ports. Excuse me, at 192K. So that's a great uh, resource for anyone that may have started their audio journey with a Scarlett 18i20 or a Claret 8 Pre or any similar USB interface that has an ADAT output. You don't have to get rid of that old gear as you upgrade. You can simply bring that gear with you as you start your red journey. Now you're already engaging the digital inputs and this becomes a higher channel count for you uh, from the get-go. So the spit of connections, these are less likely to get used these days, but we have decided to keep them on for a couple different cases. The main being for any guitarists out there. So if anyone uses the Kemper Profile Amp, for example, that has a spit of output, um, which you can use to come to the Red 8 Pre and record those guitar tracks directly from the Kemper. It stays digital from the source. There's not a lot of backwards and forwards um, analog to digital conversion going on. It's just straight into the Red and you still get to keep the analog inputs available for all of your other sources. So that's what I was mentioning in the beginning, having that digital expansion really makes these things as big as they truly are. Uh, another thing to, to note on the RCA ports there as well is that it's not unusual to find a digital home studio, um, digital stereo player that might have an RCA spit of output on it. So you could even connect that to the RED as well and use this device to truly run your entire home audio. One thing to note on that, uh, this is RCA SPDIF. This is not analog RCA. So if you have any analog record players, um, they're not going to connect to this the same way. Uh, so do keep that in mind. 
So you may have already noticed we've included two Thunderbolt ports on the Red 8 line. And this is not only to completely integrate the Reds into your studio, but it also proves that we here at Focusrite Pro will always have you in mind. As most computers are losing ports these days, we wanted to ensure that by connecting your Red to the computer, you aren't limiting what else you can use. With that in mind, you can connect one of the Thunderbolt ports to your Mac or PC, and the other can be used as a pass-through, so either a second monitor screen or a Thunderbolt hard drive. Even a UAD satellite could be seen by your computer simply by connecting it through the Red. My personal favorite hidden feature there, though, is that you can actually connect a Thunderbolt to lightning cable here, and you can charge your phone while you're working as well. So you have a little bit of electricity on the desk without having to bring any other power sources or power supplies up with you. Uh, so a quick note, anyone that noticed that I said Mac and PC right there on those Thunderbolt ports, that is correct. We do officially now have Windows support available for the Red Ranger products, truly opening them up to any studio build that you may have. If you're excited to check out the Reds with a Windows machine, check out the link to our latest version of Redneck Control, which includes those Windows drivers. So the best thing about the Reds in general, though, is that there's no hidden fees and nothing is optional. So for those who work with Pro Tools Ultimate or Pro Tools HDX, you've probably already noticed that I haven't mentioned the DigiLink ports yet. These are fully active and ready to go as soon as you open the box. So all you have to do is tell the Red that you're using Pro Tools mode instead of Thunderbolt mode, and that's going to engage a different set of internal drivers pulling the screen over to your Pro Tools setup. Uh, that can be done either through the LCD screen on the device, or it can be done uh, in the Redneck Control software as well, which I'll show you in just a little bit. Uh, last but not least, to the right of that, um, to circle back on everything that we've discussed uh, that this product has to offer, we have our analog inputs and outputs right here. Uh, so we have a dual TRS uh, stereo output, uh, and then we have our DB25 connections with our, which excuse me, which is our eight channels of line inputs and outputs. That's input one through eight and output three through ten. So there's ten analog outputs on this device. And to the right is the two XLR mic preamps, uh, which would probably look familiar to you. These are the Red Evolution microphone preamps, uh, which are specific to these red range of products, and they deliver a clear and honest audio performance, which actually gives you up to 63 decibels of gain, allowing you to record any vocalist or instrument, uh, no matter what the source. With all that in mind, we truly have designed the red range to be flexible and cover anything that you may need. So I've previously touched on that Redneck Control software. Hang tight with me here, quick moment while I change over my screens, and I'd actually like to give you guys just a brief tour of that software as well really show you how much it can accomplish for you. So the beauty of these devices being fully remote controllable is especially in this modern era of distance and safety protocol, I could deploy a red range interface to an artist's home and completely engineer the session from here. I can make any physical change to this device from this software, which you could access through a screen sharing software like Skype or TeamViewer. So if we take a deeper look, here on the front panel, I have those two mic pre's that I can set to mic, instrument, or line. And from here on the desk, I can raise and lower the mic pre volume as well. I also have my phantom power, my polarity, my high pass, and air mode, uh, which is an ISA emulation. For anyone not familiar with the ISA range, we'll be touching on that a little bit later on as well. Cool thing here as well is I can also link these two together. So if I am recording any stereo sources, that's gonna make them combine at the same time. Underneath that, we're looking at our analog outputs. So it's all kind of nicely labeled for you as well. Each of the individual analog outputs is individually controllable, and you can do that in mono or stereo if you wanted to do that. And the cool thing is that I can also control the headphones from here as well. Um, obviously, it's not often that your support is gonna ask you to turn their headphones up for them, but you know it might happen. You don't have to go to the desk and do it. You can just do it from right here. And lastly, you get a nice little metering of everything going on on the Dante side of things as well. So here in the monitoring tab, this is gonna be for anyone doing any kind of uh, surround mixing or Atmos mixing, which we'll also learn about later on today. Um, this is gonna get you any of the output groupings that you need. So for this device, you have the 10 analog outputs that I mentioned earlier. I can assign the monitor knob to control all 10 of these at the exact same time. 
uh, let's say that I'm just doing a 5.1. I could just select the individuals that I want. Um, so it truly doesn't matter the way that you want to do it. You can customize it however you want to customize it. My favorite part of all this though is the input routing screen because this really does give you just full, honest, raw control of what's happening in your DAW, your digital analog, or Scott, <laughs> excuse me, digital audio workstation. Um, so for anyone not familiar with that terminology, that's your Pro Tools, your Logic, your Ableton, uh, that's referenced as a DAW, um, which we'll see here as well in a little bit. So what I can do here is fully change what that Thunderbolt driver is seeing. And the way that I have it set up currently, let's say that I have two keyboards connected to my red and then I have an X2P in the other room. I have my four inputs here, my two stereo sources and my stereo source from the other room. So let's say hypothetically, I purchase a third keyboard and I wanna get that hooked up and I don't wanna confuse myself that I'm on three, four and then seven and eight. I simply move this around. So by going here, I can select any of my inputs, so that's any of the analog or any of the digital inputs and just simply move them around. So that's bump the Dante channel down. So now if I were to go to Logic, channel five and six would be line five and six on the device and channel seven and eight would be that stereo in input from the X2P in the other room. So it's that easy to just change where the computer, where your DAW sees those inputs, uh, which really makes just use of life easier uh, when you're using these products. On the output side of things, I can do the exact same, um, but backwards. So this is for all of the analog outputs as well as all of the digital outputs. Uh, so all of my line outputs here that are available to me, uh, all of the ADAT outputs and all of the Dante outputs are fully customizable. Um, I can select any of the playback, the DAW channel that we were referencing a second ago there. So this is any of my Pro Tools or Logic channels. I can individually send a bus to an individual output. Uh, any of my hardware inputs and a custom mix. So a useful tool for doing custom mixes is often for headphone use. Let's say you have two artists in there that wanna hear something separately. I can go into my custom mix screen up here and I can pull in by simply clicking up here. This is gonna drag everything that I have going into the studio. And let's say for an example that my artist is got a stereo source coming on one and two, but they only wanna hear themselves on the left. I can simply pan this over here on that custom mix, which if I go back to output routing is only on headphone one. That artist is now only going to hear what they're doing on the left hand side. This is not gonna interfere with any other output unless you specifically assign that output to this custom mix. Uh, so we have eight different custom mix options here, which gives us full customizable control over everything that you are possibly able to do with this product. Hopefully that's helped to show you guys how massive the Red 8 line is and everything that it can accomplish and how much the Red range of products can accomplish. Um, with that, I'd like to introduce Dave back to your screens and let's see if any questions will come through during that segment. Thanks, Pete. So let's look and see. The first question we have is, is it possible to control the Red interfaces via an RJ45 preamps, et cetera? Are you planning to add this option? Um, that's a great question. Uh, at the moment, I don't believe there is. I would need to do a little bit of digging on that for you. Um, as far as any plans in the future, we you can't really discuss what we're thinking of doing, um, but we'll can circle back with that if you leave your email uh, in that comment box as well. We'll find uh, a way to get back in touch with you and keep you in touch with anything that we are doing. Excellent. The next question is, what is the difference between the Red 4 Pre and the Red 8 line? So the difference is um, in the analog inputs that they offer. So digitally, they offer the same thing, um, but the 4 Pre has four mic Pre's on it, and the new Red 8 line has eight line inputs instead, giving you those two optional mic Pre's. Uh, and of course, as things do evolve over time, uh, when the 4 Pre came out, Thunderbolt 2 was still the norm, so that has Thunderbolt 2. The Red 8 line have now has Thunderbolt 3, just keeping it a little bit more up to date as we release new products. Excellent. The next question is, are the fans in the Red 8 line as loud as the Red 8 Pre fans, or are they possibly a bit quieter? Actually, I'm going to jump in on that one, Pete. Um, so the Red 8 line, being that it has two mic Pre's instead of the 8, the fans will engage a little bit less. Um, but they are every bit as quiet as the Red 8 Pre, and they should be a little quieter because they should engage a little bit less. So the next question we have is, 
Is Dante only redundant on the red eight line? Sorry, I said that wrong. Is the Dante only redundant on the red eight line? Um, so interesting question. That could be taken a couple of different ways. So just depending on the, the way that they mean that. Um, on the red eight line, specifically on the red range entirely, actually, um, yes, the Dante is the only redundant part of those. So uh, if you're familiar with our red net line, those actually have redundant power supplies as well, uh, which the reds don't have. Um, but the, is Dante redundancy specific to the red eight line? Uh, no, that's going to be any of the red, uh, red net and ISA products, um, excuse me, specifically with the ADN cards, which is something we'll also learn about later on. Um, but most uh, Brooklyn 2 Dante devices are going to offer this redundancy. It is a case by case basis, but all of our modern equipment offers it. Excellent. Well, that was uh, all the time we have for questions right now.